That's it guys, take it in, try to understand how much it's different before I dive into it. The latest chapter of the Black Series and it is the AMG GT Black Series. I'm still shaking too. I too lost my breath when I first saw it. There were giggles, there were all sorts of emotions coming out when I saw what the final version of the GT Black Series looked like. None of the camo car pictures that I saw or that I showed you guys in the previous videos really does the presence of this car justice. As it would be clear, even to a layman, every bit of this car differentiates from all previous iterations of the AMG GT. And this car is one that is aimed squarely at becoming the king of the ring. So without further ado, let us dive straight into the Mercedes AMG GT Black Series. This is what the love of cars is all about, and specifically the love that AMG addicts have for their cars. It's all about these uncontrollable emotions for what is an extraordinary product and the feelings that we derive, not just by driving them, but simply just looking at them. On a personal customer level, I'm super excited just to see it because, well, I can't wait to own one if I'm fortunate enough. But for you guys, and as a journalist, it's just simply one of the coolest cars that I've ever seen. And I promise you, I'm gonna show you every millimeter of this car before this video finishes. So as always at RBR, we do things a little bit differently. So I'd like to talk about the origins of Black Series, which are a little bit unknown. You ask someone about Black Series and you tend to hear things like C63, SLS, maybe CLK if they're well-versed in the topic. But what a lot of people don't realize that Black Series actually started with the SLK 55. Ironically, it's one of the rarest Black Series ever, or perhaps it's not ironic because it's not really that well known. This was a car that again took this idea of lighter weight, more carbon parts, 50 horsepower more than the standard car, crammed into that nice V8. But most surprisingly about the SLK is that it wasn't a folding hardtop, it was actually a coupe for the Black Series. Now, this car in a way set the precedent for taking what was probably the best small AMG of its time and making it that much more track focused and exciting for the customer. Of course, there were many more iterations, well, not many more, just a handful of iterations of Black Series that followed thereafter and they all followed this same theme. The Black Series name has only been reserved for the most dynamic of standard AMG cars. The ones that really come to mind for me are the SLS and the C63 Black Series, two cars that really took a lot of learning from GT3, DTM racing, etc. that AMG has a lot of experience in and brought them onto road cars, focusing on things like aerodynamics, lighter weight, use of carbon, more power, and of course, a really emotional design. But then when you look at the AMG GT family, you kind of realize that those things have been handled by models already in that family. Now the GT started its life in 2014 with the AMG GTS. It was based on the underpinnings of an already great car, which was the SLS AMG, but do not mistake it for a baby SLS because even with just 510 brake horsepower from that lovely four liter, it was already faster than the SLS thanks to the dynamic engine mounts and so many new learnings that AMG brought into their baby supercar. This was quickly followed two years later by the most infamous AMG GT so far, and that is the AMG GTR, AKA the beast of the green hell. 585 brake horsepower, all the learning that you could want brought in from the GT3 customer racing car into a car that looked like that GT3 car. It had rear wheel steering. We had extensive use of active aerodynamics. We had nine stage traction control in that car, and again, more use of carbon fiber like in the front fenders and in the roof. So the beast of the green hell was born. And when you compare the percentages that the GTR in its standard form increased the potential of the GTS, you see that the numbers are very similar to what this SLS Black improved over the standard SLS. So it seems to be doing the same job, as I said, as the Black Series. To compound this further after this, we had the GTR Pro. No more power, but a real focus on making the car even more track worthy with 
high attention on aerodynamics and on the suspension of the car to make it that much better going fast on the Nürburgring as proved by our friend Mauro Engel. Like the GTR pulled information from the GT3 car, the GTR Pro pulled learning from the GT4. Again, this is the method that Black Series worked in the past. But almost like the coming of a messiah, I always believed that the Black Series would still come. I always said it to you guys, and you true believers knew it as well. So today, there we have it, the AMG GT Black Series. It came, I told you it would. But then how do you better an already phenomenal car? Frankly, the GTR was the best car that Mercedes had ever made, and the Pro made it even more focused. Is this like a Black Series Plus now? So let's dive straight into it and talk brass tacks. The power, 730 brake horsepower, makes this, ignoring the Project One, the most powerful AMG ever. We've also got 800 Newton meters of torque, 100 more than the GTR, and a hugely improved zero to 60 of 3.1 seconds from this front mid engine car is seriously, seriously impressive. Now, when we compare that 730 to the base 510, of the AMG GT or even the standard GT underneath it, we can see that the percentage difference between the two is much larger than what Black Series has done before. So like I said, this is almost like a Black Series on top of Black Series, a furthering of this AMG GTR potential to something that we have never done at AMG before. Now, what powers this car? The engine is an extremely exciting thing. It does share code name with the GTR engine in part, it's the M178BS Black Series designation. But from everything I've heard about this engine, it is essentially all new for the application used in Black Series. And luckily, it really looks all new as well. Now, the biggest difference in this new engine is going from a cross-plane crankshaft to a flat-plane one. This is what they look like compared to each other. And generally, flat planes are used in order to increase responsiveness of the engine. AMG said adding power to the engine wasn't the issue. The issue was trying to make it as responsive as possible. Now, flat plane cranks are lighter because you don't have to deal with the counterweight in the general shape of a cross plane uh, crankshaft. And thus, it makes it that much more responsive and generally they're higher revving as well. But that's not all that's changed in this engine. Yes, that was to deal with the responsiveness and to get more power out of it as well. But we've also got a new crankcase, new exhaust manifolds. We've got reworked pistons as well. And for the first time in the AMG GT2 door, the twin turbos are now twin scroll twin turbos. And we know that from application in GT63 and E63S yes, that they're that much more responsive and quicker for the driver when driving in various, various conditions. And you can see everything is coming back down to responsiveness for the driver with this engine. And again, can we just look at it and just admire how brilliant it looks? It almost looks like it's got shark fins on top of it. So as we can see, hardly anything shared in terms of the engine with the AMG GTR. Now that all links to the seven speed gearbox, which is a good thing because it's a great gearbox, but this has been reinforced to handle the 800 Newton meters of torque. It's also held in place by carbon fiber. This all flows through again, carbon torque tube and in a completely new exhaust system specifically made for the black. Gone is the titanium exhaust system of GTR. Again, not sharing that element with that car. And it's been replaced with a lighter, thin walled steel exhaust system, which is finished with those gorgeous round tips. Now, the engine has a different firing order because it's a flat plane crank. And with all the changes that it's had, you can expect a different music note to be emitting from those round exhausts. This is a pre-production car, so we can't show you the exhaust sound, but... Scratch that. Past me didn't know that future me would have access to this video. Here's a little bit of sound, but as AMG videos tell us in the past, it's not gonna tell you what the final car sounds like. That we will have to wait for. I spoke about it with the GTR Pro and I'll say it again, AMG are one of the best in taking the idea of grid aerodynamics and making a design that does justice to the concept and to what the, con to what the customer wants. So let's start with the most obvious bit. It's gotta be the front end. Now, of course, the grill is from the new GT3 racing car. Now, this was not just done for design or for size. This was done in order to bring in as much air as possible to cool 
that engine, of course, it's going to be that much hotter, producing 730 brake. It also negates the need for having the side intakes as the GTR used to had. Again, something else to differentiate it totally from GTR. So this is going to bring a huge amount of air in. Then you noticed on our bonnet here with the lovely exposed carbon fiber, you've got these huge holes. And again, this is very reminiscent of the GT3 car. Through here, not only do you dissipate heat from the engine bay, you also have air travel from grill, through bonnet, through the side pillars, into the massive rear wing that we're gonna get onto later. Again, linking front to rear very, very nicely. Again, you'll notice we have aero flicks on the front here. We've also got an aero curtain that sends air through the wheel arch here, and it goes again through the side and you'll notice the GT3 or SLS black style newly designed side wing here. And the air goes through there down the side sill where there's another hole through the rear wheel arch behind it where there is yet again another real vent where the air comes through. So like I said, poster boy for aerodynamics. Now you'll remember with the GTR Pro, they added these louvres and they were in black plastic and I absolutely hated them. Now they are in the body color of the car. In fact, they are part of the body of the car. Again, a big differentiation to Black Series, to um, Pro rather. And this again helps with the downforce. And then you'll notice on the front of the bonnet, one more feature, this over here. This brings in air directly to cool those turbos. Now, even the underbody of the car has been aerodynamically optimized. We've got more use of carbon fiber shear panels and more of the underbody of the car is closed up, again, helping aerodynamically. And we also have rubber aerodynamic pieces underneath in the underbody in order to direct air. We also have one more thing, which is track only. It's a lower lip here that is manual. It has to be manually pulled out. It's for track only, as I said. Of course, the black is significantly wider than the GTR and longer. And you can see that on the wheel arches of the black itself, the entire body is completely different bar the doors and the roof. The wheels are all new, they are forged, really looking like the old ones from the SLS AMG, but with a modern twist. These are the only option you get, but I really like the look of them. Now, one thing that I missed, which is exceedingly important with black series, it's kind of the elephant in the room, if you like. It's that gigantic double rear wing. It is very, very impressive. It is the largest that they could legally make on this car, taking in mind safety and size, et cetera, et cetera. And it is literally huge. I want you to imagine if you've ever seen an SLS Black Series or say the C63, and you take its wing and you just naturally made it 10 times bigger, and I'm not exaggerating. It's the same design as those in principle, but it's so much bigger. It's almost like a caricature of an old Black Series wing. I absolutely love it. Now, this is a two-stage wing. Two stages of that are manually adjustable as we found in Black Series in the past, but it's got one more fun feature, and that is active aerodynamics. There's a little panel on the top wing that moves up to 15 degrees, depending on driving conditions. That can be moved inside the car with the button as well. And again, like I said, poster boy for aerodynamics. Now, a quick note about materials used. As with Black Series in the past, despite what was done on GTR, there is still weight saving going on in this Black Series. So first of all, we've got further increased usage of carbon fiber. The GTR already had the front fenders in carbon fiber. We had the roof in carbon fiber, which this continues. But the Black Series also has a completely carbon fiber front hood. And I wanna show you what that looks like underneath. It looks like you're staring at a GT3 racing car, but that's not half as exciting as what I'm gonna deem the world's coolest looking rear hatchback because now the rear boot lid is also carbon fiber. And frankly, it looks absolutely incredible. The entire boot lid is completely black for the first time. It's an interesting design choice, but really links well with the carbon roof. The badges for the first time ever are not chrome. They're in a matte titanium like finish and really give the black a completely different look. I love how the V8 by turbo badge has a red ring around the V8 just to show you that it is a very much different engine here in the Black Series. Apart from that, we've also got lightweight glass and thinner glass used on both the front and the rear of the car, which is of course a great weight. We have carbon ceramic brakes as standard on the Black Series, which were not standard on the GTR Series. Perhaps the most controversial bit is the rear bumper with a huge amount of carbon fiber, kind of reminding me of the GT2 RS 
in person. I really, really like it. It's got a lot of nice details. Then you look at the lower part of the diffuser with the round pipes, you really get a kind of completely unique look for the Black Series, which is what we want. And finally, the roll cage, if you're allowed the track package in your region, is made of titanium rather than steel. So all of that gives us a car, despite all the other technical changes that we, that we mentioned and the huge rear wing, etc., that is 35 kg lighter than the GTR. Now, of course, suspension has been modified as well. And unlike the Pro, this returns to AMG ride control suspension, but this time we've got a two valve application, which makes it even faster to deal with bumps, particularly when you're going on track. And we've got adjustable camber on this car. We've got a carbon fiber torsion bar on the front where the Pro added steel pivot bearings on just the lower part of the rear wishbones. We've also got it on the upper of the rear and the front again helping with this idea of rigidity now interestingly unlike the gtr it's got no rear wheel steering and amg says it doesn't need it because it doesn't affect the dynamics at all now i wonder if you guys are getting the same feeling that i am i feel like the black series has been made in spite of what was done on the gtr it's like almost a clean sheet of how do you take an amg gt body and make it as brilliant as possible now to have a look inside there's always a fear as a customer that when a brand makes great interiors like Mercedes do that, maybe they won't differentiate a special model enough. Luckily, with the Black Series, they have not done that. So I wanna show you what makes it unique, say, versus GTR. Let's have a look at the trims inside and the unique parts, because there are a few, just like we find on the outside. So, first of all, I think the best place to start has to be the door card. Now, this is so reduced versus GTR. Like, seriously, seriously reduced. You, all you've got here is a cloth pulley handle to shut the door. Yes, we still have those old switches. They have not been replaced, but generally it's sparse. But what is a lovely feature, look at the AMG chevrons there. If we get close up. That looks great, doesn't it, in the leather? Now this is the standard interior for the GT Black. It is black Dynamica, black Nappa, and orange stitching to match that orange theme that the new paintwork will bring across. And of course, the link to the GT3 car. You'll notice that that dynamic theme flows throughout the top of the dashboard, just as you would find, say again, in the GT3 cars, emphasizing that point. One of the bits I love the most is the little Black Series logo, matching the rear badge. I'll try and not shake. See it right there, under AMG. Looks fantastic. One really interesting part here we haven't got a cup holder. They've actually gotten rid of the lid because it saves weight, which I love. It's just brilliant. Matte carbon fiber comes standard as well. And then we've got a unique seat design on the carbon bucket seats. You can see the racing line going through the middle. Lovely AMG lettering in orange as well. Really, really like this. There's a lovely startup screen as well. This is the first time, in fact, that I'm jumping in the car myself. A little bit speechless. Looks incredible in here. Love the startup screen. We've still got the digital displays that we find in GT, GT Family, Facelift, GTR, etc. Um, but just the whole ambiance, it's a bit more sparse. Like I said, it's a lot more reminding me of when I had the privilege of sitting in a GT3 car once and uh, screaming for my life while uh, being taken around a track. Getting shades of that, which is great. And there is a magma beam orange coming specifically for the black series in the future that's going to match the look of the gt3 so guys it's been an absolutely huge honor a humbling moment to show you guys the new black series the latest and greatest amg gt maybe the latest and greatest ever amg it could be the end of an era as far as big v8s and rear wheel drive cars there will be a drive eventually. Obviously, I absolutely cannot wait for that. I'm sure you guys can't as well. Can't wait to hear it. Can't wait to see how it differentiates on the road to GTR. And from a personal level, as a customer, I don't think I've ever been so thrilled to see a car go from prototype to finished product. It's really blown me away. Um, I hope I'm lucky enough to own one one day. Um, certainly, I'm going to put my name in the hat. There's a lot of story to tell on Black Series before that. So guys, if you enjoyed this, please do like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, and I'll see you again soon.